Right, good day everyone. Uh, we are doing accounting masterclass focusing on grade 12 syllabus and today we are doing November 2018 exam. This paper was written in November 2018 and we are doing question 3. Question 3 is based on financial based on financial statements financial statements and audit report based on financial statement and audit report and this question is 75 marks right we are starting with 3.1 3.1 of this question. It is always advisable that students need to have a question paper in front of them when we are doing these lessons. So we are on page 8 of the question paper November 2018 and we are doing question 3. 3.1.1 .1, 3 .1, it says indicate where each of the following items would be placed in the financial statements by choosing a term from the list below. Write only the answer next to the question numbers 3.1.1 .1 to 3.1.4 in the answer book. The options given, it's the non-current assets. We know the non-current assets, we are referring to the assets that will last a long period of time in the business and these assets are not easily convertible into cash. And if they are non-current, the long time in the business is regarded as anything that is more than 12 months. Anything that will last more than 12 months, then will then be regarded as a non-current asset. We have current assets, which have a lot, a short lifespan in the business, and they are easily convertible into cash. We have equity as one of the options. We have operating expenses and operating income. These are the options we need to choose from. So 3.1.1, we the trade and other receivables. The trade and other receivables, we are referring to the debtors here. The trade and other receivables will be found in the balance sheet and will be recorded under the current assets. So trade and other receivable is current assets. Trade and other receivable is current assets. So the option that you are taking is current assets. Current assets in the balance sheet. Yeah. And we have trade and other receivables that are recorded under the current assets. The adjustment of provision for bad debts is found in the income statement. And if it is a decrease, that adjustment becomes an income. So therefore, the best option for this one is operating income. So adjust of provision for bad debts decrease is operating income. If we are decreasing provision for bad debts, the adjustment will then become an operating income. But if we are increasing adjust provision for bad debts increase, then that would have been operating expense but because we are decreasing provision for pet debts that is an operating income fixed deposit that is maturing in three years time so that is more than 12 months so this thing is going to last a long period of time so this is an asset that will be regarded as a non-current asset non-current asset so this will be regarded as a non-current asset. So this is the option for the fixed deposit that is maturing in three years time. But the fixed deposit that is maturing within, that within 12 months, that will be the current assets. But because this one is in three years, then the best option is non-current assets. It will be recorded under non-current assets. 3.1.4, trading stock deficit. If there is stock that has been stolen, that stock is recorded under the trading stock deficit account. And this account is an operating expense. So the option we are choosing for 3.1.4 is operating expenses. Trading stock deficit will be recorded under operating 
expenses so this is 3.1.4 3.1.1 it was talking about trade and other receivables the debtors they are recorded in the statement of financial position under the current assets 3.1.2 adjustment of provision for pet debts is recorded in the income statement if it is a decrease it then becomes an operating income 3.1.3 .3, fixed deposit maturing in three years because it's more than 12 months and fixed deposit is an asset then this is regarded as a non-current asset and then the last one is the trading stock deficits the loss of stock here maybe it's stolen then that will be recorded under operating expenses